Why so serious? What's up, boys? In today's video, Shaco Master Eeks is going to teach you everything you need to know for the Demon Jester in Season 12. We're talking jungle clears, Q spots, combos, tips and tricks, builds and runes, summoner spells. So by the end of this video, you will have all the skills required to terrorize your enemies on one of the game's most unique champions. But this guide isn't the only Shaco content we have because we have so much more on our website at gameweave.com and that goes for every champion in every role. We upload up to 20 informative challenger tier videos a week that are guaranteed to help you improve and achieve your goals so check out those links in the description and comment section to get that exclusive access and let's get into it. Now before anyone jumps onto the rift you have to know that there are two playstyles to Shaco. So you have your Chad AD version and you have the Beta Weeb AP version. Now that's how most Shaco players view these playstyles but in my humble challenger Shaco opinion both playstyles are viable. It just depends on what type of damage your team needs and the enemy team's champions. So as AD Shaco you want to play against champions who are squishy and don't have a ton of flashes, dashes, and god knows what else, so you have a much better chance of getting kills. But as AP Shaco, you want the enemy team to have engage. You want them to sniff your Geodron because you have so many ways in which you can bait their abilities and trap them for yourself and your teammates. But to really break down these two playstyles, let's talk about the pros and cons for each variation. So the pros for AD Shaco, he's very easy to play, very high 1v9 potential, has a strong early game, it's easy to execute ganks because of your invisibility and high damage output, and all of this means you can snowball from one one kill to 10 kills in a heartbeat. But what about the cons to playing AD Shaco? Well, you are very kill and gold reliant. If you don't get kills or a lead in the early game, you won't have the power to one-shot enemy champions later on. Now, in the early game, you will need Ignite for most players in ganks. Without it, your kill threat is nowhere near as high. Now, it kind of depends on your build, but every AD Shaco is going to be squishy and you will almost be like a glass cannon. You might hit the hardest, but you also get hit the hardest. So it's very easy for the enemy team to trade one for one when you do go in. Now, against good and smart players, and there aren't many I know, but when they do exist, it becomes difficult to make AD Shaco work because you are predictable. You kill the enemy AD carry once, and all of a sudden, next time, they have four teammates sitting on top of their head. And lastly, make one mistake on AD Shaco, the game is over. Now let's talk about the pros for AP Shaco. First up, you will always be useful, unlike AD. Now second, AP Shack has a higher skill ceiling, so if you can master this version, your peak performance will be higher. Now third, you are unpredictable, because it's all about mind gaming your opponents, and in turn, this for me anyway, is way more fun than AD Shaco. Seeing your opponents run into a series of perfectly placed boxes, it's very satisfying and funny. Now fourth, AP Shaco is generally better for team fighting because of the AoE in your boxes and ultimate, and the multiple two shift poisons you can dish out during these fights. And finally, AP Shaco is more forgiving. If you make a mistake, it's nowhere near as big of a deal. But the cons for AP Shaco, well, you have a weaker early game than AD. So snowballing, you can do it, but it's less achievable. And based on this, your potential to solo carry games is just not as high. And also, you are more reliant on your teammates, which is scary, I know, but you do need other sources of damage because you can very rarely just one-shot people like the AD version. So after figuring out which type of Shaco you want to play, this next chapter of this guide is maybe what you have all been waiting for, jungle clears. And the foundation for most of these is knowing where and when to place your boxes. So if you want to start at your red buff, and this is for both sides, you are going to sprint towards your red buff size jungle entrance and place a box so the radius covers the entire path. This will dissuade enemies from invading, but another trick you can do at this point is to place your trinket in the same position, and I'm going to give you a chance to figure out why you would do this so you can pause the video, have a think, and I want you to answer in the comments. So the reason for doing this, spoiler alert, is to know if the enemy mid lane awards this area. This means you will know if you can level 2 gank mid or not after clearing your raptors in red, because if you don't ward it, they can easily place a trinket over this wall and you will be spotted going for that gank and you'll be wasting time. Now for the actual box placements for your red and raptor start, so after placing your first box and trinket, run back to the raptor brush and chill. Then as the game clock approaches 50 seconds, you are going to zoom in at this little triangle just like I do and place your box on top of this intersection. Then for your next box, move your camera to the right and zoom in at this triangle and place your box just to the right of this intersection. That's the first hard part, but it will become second nature after practice. Then your third box, you want to place it inside this circle I have made with my cursor, but a good guide is to look at these lily pads. Place it below these, not above. Then you run to your red buff, hopefully with a leash from your bot lane, and we will hit this until our third box is about to die. Now this is crucial, because at this point your next box will be close to coming off cooldown, so run away towards your raptors and place this box at your feet so the red buff will activate it, and then we want to last hit the big raptor and then turn back to the red buff to finish that 
bad boy off. Now depending on the leash, in some games you won't even have to auto attack the red buff again because your fourth box will finish it off. Now for red side it's similar but the indicators are different. So when 50 seconds approaches, zoom in at this orange leaf. Now to the southeast of this, there is a faint line that connects with a bolder line. Where these two meet, put your cursor just a tiny bit to the right and press W. Now your next box we head to the left side of the camp and there is a faint green circle sitting on this line. Put your cursor bang in the middle of this green circle and place your next box. Now your following box, look at this diamond shaped rock on the ground. Now from the western point of this rock, if we were to draw a line from this point to the red buff wall, we place our box in the middle of this line. Then we run to red buff and repeat what we did for blue side. We auto attack, run towards raptors and place our next box at our feet and Bob's your uncle. Now there are so many paths you can take after this. You can go to Krugs, you can level 2 gank mid, you can go to Gromp, but I'm going to show you the Eags clear, which is a cheeky clear that I invented. So after raptors in red, queue towards your wolf camp and as you approach the closest wall, place your box in the middle of the camp. Then you want to backstab the small wolf furthest away from you twice and then hit the other small wolf twice as well. By this point your queue will be back off cooldown, so queue to the blast cone and take yourself over to your blue buff. The box that you placed on wolves will finish off the small wolves and the point of this as you're about to see, you hit level 3 with red buff and blue buff. This is the quickest double buff level 3 clear in the entire game. Now sometimes starting in your red and raptors might not be optimal. Maybe the enemy team invade you from a different angle or maybe you want to start blue buff and path towards a certain lane. So when you are starting at your blue buff, place your first box on its spawn position at 50 seconds and then your second box next to it as soon as you can. Then for your third box, run over to your gromp and place it just outside your gromp spawn point. And what you're going to do is walk your blue buff towards your gromp and then you are going to smite your gromp. This will leash it into that third box, at which point you will have another box. So place this above this bottom wall in between the two camps so you can do them both at the same time. This saves so much time. And after this, you can do walls, you can go straight to red. It's completely up to you. So I reckon that Eags clear deserves a like. What do you guys think? And just one more reminder guys that of course it's completely up to you if you want to check out our website or not, but why would you not check it out? For content created by challenger players that is uploaded daily, like what are we waiting for? Now the other Shaco specific mechanic in this game are the Q spots, so I'm going to show you all the most important ones you need to perfect. So the first one, the fire jump. So when you're ganking from this angle towards the mid lane, click towards the top right corner of the brush and make sure that Shaco is as close to this wall as possible. Then what you you're going to do is place your mouse over and to the right of this fire cauldron. This will send you over the top of it and even with one point in your queue, you can make it across the entire lane. Just keep in mind that this does not work for the other side. Now next up, the V jump. So this one is all about where you position before pressing Q. So what you're going to do is zoom in at there's a V in the wall for me. You want to right click on the point of this V as close to the wall as possible. And if you do it right, it will look as if Shaco's knees are inside the wall. This is when you know it's time to queue, but make sure to aim your cursor in line with these purple flowers. This will propel you further into the lane and you evade the tower's vision, not just the range. This is very important. Now we have the same jumper on the other side of the map, the tree jump. So you want to right click above this blue cloud nine wannabe pattern in the wall, I don't know what it is, and then you want to aim your cursor at the first pointed rock to the right of this little shrub. These two jumps are obviously deadly AF because you get behind the enemy without them knowing and it's guaranteed kills. Now other Q jumps, the river jumps. So top side, you want to right click the top left of this brush and make sure Shaco is pressed against the wall. And once Shaco is there, aim your cursor at the edge of this rock face just before it caves in and bang, you're behind them. Now for the bot side river jump, same start, we are going to right click the bottom right of this brush as close to the wall as possible, of course, and then move your cursor to the right edge of this rock in the waterfall. These two river jumps are deadly too, but these areas are likely to be watered, so do be a little careful. Now the only other specific Q jump you really have to know about is the stream jump and this is in the top dry brush area so these two streams you see well to jump anywhere over the top side of this wall we need to make sure we are right clicking above the first stream and that's it if you don't queue when shaco is above it you will just slide along the wall or not move at all and you ff so now we're going to move on to shaco tips and tricks and you're going to get 10 quick fire tips here so number one just because you're ganking it doesn't mean you have to queue often saving your queue if the enemy champion is really pushed up means you have it for when they flash or dash away so don't just think because you have an invisibility and a blink, you have to use it each time you gank. Now tip number two, also with ganking, lots of Shaco players use their E way too early. Your E, remember, deals more damage the lower the enemy champion is, so please save it if you don't need to slow them. Now tip number three, when you're trying to escape, right click away from your Q's direction and then Q back into it. This is going to break the enemy team's ankles and your teammates will be calling you Alan Iverson. Now tip number four, you can place your box while in your Q's invisibility and your invis will not break. Very useful to know when you are ganking 
tanking lanes. Now tip number 5, if you are red smited, ignited, about to tank minion auto attacks, or the enemy team has red sweepers, your outline will be shown, and they will know where you go if you queue, so it's best to try to survive until these effects end, and then you use your queue. Now moving on to tip number 6, a red hot but difficult engage to pull off involves ulting in fog, then pushing your clone away from you, and then queuing into the fight so your clone reattaches on top of an enemy champion. This takes time to master, but if you can master it, especially on AP Shaco, it is devastating. Now tip number 7, remember, your box can block single target skill shots. So at least Cocoon, Lee Sin Q, Morgana Q, so when you see that coming at you, quickly place your W in front of yourself. Lots of Shaco players, especially AD Shaco players, when they queue in for a fight, they commit to it no matter what. But while you're invisible, another enemy champion might show up, or the AD carry you're trying to one-shot is now too far away. It's best in these cases to just admit, okay, okay, we can't do this Shaco, rather than just overextending for it anyway, and you're probably going to die. Now tip number 9, ulting over walls is kind of easy, but like your Q jumps, make sure Shaco is as close as possible to the walls you want to jump over. If you're too far away, you are not going to make it. Now tip number 10, your clone from your ultimate will spawn opposite to where your cursor is pointing as you press R. This is must know info because you can bait your opponents just by how you and your clone reappear and it will save your skin in many games. Now as far as skill order goes on AD and AP Shaco, they are a little different. So with AD, we want to be taking our W first of course, then we want to be taking our Q, then putting a point in E and then another in W at level 4. After this we're going to be maxing our E, then our Q and of course our ultimate at level 6, 11 and 16. Now for AP Shaco, kind of similar, we're going to skill W first, then our Q, then our E and then our W again at level 4, but at level 5 we're putting another point in W. After this we then want to max our E first and then our Q because having a longer invisibility during the Q means we can get in better positions to place our boxes. The actual duration of the fear or the damage your box does is not really that important. It will hit hard enough and fear long enough so you can do your thing regardless. Now for the builds and runes for the shack. Now let's start with AD and I'm going to recommend just one rune page and one set of items you should be getting in every single game because they work. So the rune page you see on the screen now with Hail of Blades and the Domination Tree, this is standard, but running Alacrity in the Precision Tree on the other side is the best. Reason being, we don't have to build Berserker's Grease because this gives us enough attack speed on its own. Remember, we have Hail of Blades, so anything else is kind of overkill, Alacrity is just perfect. Now in terms of our build, we're going to start as AD Shaker with Hail Blade. That's the blue jungle item. Reason for this and not Ember Knife is because we are a bursty champion who deals damage quickly. The blue smite enhances this. We're not a Conqueror jungler looking for extended fights, so Red Smite doesn't really do much for us. Now our first two major items are always going to be Dust Blade and Lucidity Boots. Why? Cooldown. If you go for Crack and Slay, Gale Force, Berserker's Grease, you have zero ability haste from these items, and this veers more towards the Glass Cannon build. With ability haste, you will have your Q up more than once in fights. Your ultimate will be up sooner so you can dive, take objectives, and fight more. And let's be honest, do you think an AD carry with zero armor is going to be able to survive a Hail of Blades and Night Shaker with a Dust Blade? Of course not. So you're still going to have enough damage. Now after these two, we go Essence Reaver for the damage and the haste, and those are your three core items every single game. Afterwards, it completely depends on what the enemy carries are building. So if they are building armor, get a Lord Dominus of Guards. If they have a lot of AP, you can always consider Hexdrinker. If they have a lot of attack damage, Guardian's Angel is a good shout. But if they have zero armor, just get an Infinity Edge. No one will be safe. Other items you might consider include Serpent's Fang, Mortal Reminder, Novary Quick Blades, Mercurial Scimitar. It just depends on the game you are in, so always stay flexible after your core items. Now for AP Shaco, I'm also going to recommend just one room page and one set of items. So with Dark Harvest, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter, this is nothing new. But for your secondary tree, taking Transcendence and Gathering Storm is a must because AB Shaco is all about ability haste and scaling. So keeping this in mind for your items, we start with Hailblade of course, and your first two items in every single game are Leandrew's Anguish and Boots of Lucidity. Just like Dustblade, Leandrew's giving you ability haste from the item itself and the Mythic Passive is a huge bonus. Now your next item is going to complete your core, and this is Zonya's Hourglass. Every game you build this, even if they have 5 AP. The active is just way too useful, and it's only 2600 gold. You can bait more cooldowns, make more aggressive plays and engages, and it is giving you ability haste. Now just like AD Shaco's build, it depends after this on what the enemy team comp is up to. So in most games, you will probably buy Cosmic Drive. But what if they have lots of healing? Then get a 
Morellas? What about if they have a lot of AP? Then get a Banshee's Veil. What about if they are stacking Magic Resist? Then get a Blighting Jewel and finish your Void Staff later. Maybe even Shadow Flame if they have lots of shields. But what about if you're Giga Fed and they aren't building any Magic Resistance? Well, you can always think about getting a Death Cap or a Demonic Embrace if they have lots of HP. Pay attention to your scoreboards and you cannot go wrong. Now, as for your Summoner Spells, you want Ghost Cleanse, I mean Smite Ignite. Smite Ignite, every game, no need to go anything else. Thank you so much for watching our Ultimate Shaco Guide, guys, for Season 12. If you want us to continue making these Ultimate Guides, let us know by smashing that like button and tell us who you want to make a guide on next. And until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the... Peace.